the Sahara Desert. Welcome to the Sahara Desert. The largest hot desert in the world. How large? Well, it's almost the size of the entire United States. It's close to three and a half million square miles and covers nearly one third of the African continent. The Sahara also spans across 11 countries and is home to more than two and a half million people. Yes, people actually live here in the Sahara. So in these extreme conditions, how can anything grow or live in the Sahara? One word, adaptation. Over the course of thousands of years, both plants and animals have developed ways to survive in the dry desert. Let's have a look at the plant life first. More than 90% of the Sahara is too harsh to support animal life, but it's still home to 500 tree and plant species. Common in the Sahara are plants called succulents. They are a type of plant that stores water in its roots, stems and leaves. Many have a rubbery look. There are generally two different adaptations that allow plants to survive in the Sahara as well as other deserts. One adaptation is to develop long, deep roots that can seek out water hidden far below ground. An example is the acacia tree. The other adaptation is to grow roots close to the surface and radiate outward so they can be the first to get the water. Insects in the Sahara are no different than other plants and animals in that they're all uniquely adapted to the harsh life there. These Saharan silver ants are pretty remarkable for a couple of reasons. First, they have this silver coating that reflects the burning hot sun away from their bodies. Even so, they can only stay outside of their shelters for about 10 minutes at a time. The other remarkable thing is that they are incredibly fast. If they were human, they could sprint 200 meters per second. It takes the fastest man on Earth more than 19 seconds to do the same. What the Saharan silver ant is to speed, the dung beetle is to strength. These beetles are very strong for their small size. They can lift well over 1,000 times their body weight, making them the strongest creatures on Earth. The shovel-snouted lizard has a very amusing adaptation. It keeps cool by doing a little dance. When it gets too hot, it lifts up two feet at a time to keep from burning them on the hot desert floor. It lifts up a front leg and the opposite hind leg, then it switches legs. Its snout comes in very handy when it has to find a hiding place in a hurry. Check this out. A sandfish lizard can wiggle through the sand like a fish swimming through water. Believe it or not, this little lizard can move six inches per second. When you think of a desert animal, especially in the Sahara, the one that most likely jumps into your mind first is the camel. We can go so far as to say that camels are synonymous with the Sahara. They've been a part of the Saharan landscape for at least 2,000 years and have been vitally important for transportation, wool, milk and meat. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that without camels, people couldn't exist or even survive in the Sahara. There are two kinds of camels, dromedary and Bactrian. The dromedary camel has one hump and this is the one that we see in the Sahara. Bactrian camels have two humps and you'll find them in other parts of the world like the Gobi Desert. Way back when Long camel caravans would cross the desert from north to south, carrying cloth, glass, 
salt and other valuable products. On the return journey from south to north, they would carry gold, leather, pepper and cloth. They can carry up to 500 pounds for hundreds of miles across the scorching sands. If you measure to the top of their hump, camels can stand up to seven feet tall. They're nicknamed ships of the desert because they can make these long journeys over such challenging terrain. They're able to do this because they have many adaptations that make life a breeze in the scorching hot desert. First off, they have three sets of eyelids. Two eyelids have eyelashes that help to keep blowing sand out of their eyes. The third set is thin and transparent and opens from side to side. Camels can snap them shut during fierce sandstorms but still be able to see where they're going. They can also close their nostrils to stop sand from getting up their nose. Next on the list of adaptations are their humps. Did you know that a camel hump can weigh up to 80 pounds? They act as storage tanks for fat, which comes in handy when food is scarce. When that happens, camels can break down the stored fat, turning it into energy and water. This works so well that camels can go for a week without water and months without food. When they have a chance to, thirsty camels can drink more than 50 gallons of water at a time. This is part of the reason they're able to stay hydrated when water is scarce. While the Sahara is a vast and unforgiving landscape of sand and rock, there are still two and a half million people that manage to create an existence for themselves and their families here in the Sahara. And they have done so for many thousands of years. The largest group are known as the Berbers, and they are the indigenous people of the Sahara. In their language, they call themselves men of the land. Their population spreads across the borders of several countries, but they don't belong to any one of them. Originally, they survived by raising herds of grazing animals, moving them from place to place as they needed to. This way of life is known as pastoralism. Sheep, goats and camels are the herds most commonly domesticated by the Berbers. The Tuaregs are one of the largest subgroups of Berber people. They are famous the world over as the people of the desert. In their language, their name means free man. Just as many other Berbers do, they wear long, loose robes to keep the hot sun and blowing sand off. Their most characteristic robe is the blue one, like this one here. They also wear a traditional headdress, which is a combination turban and scarf. In their society, it is the men who wear it, which is why they are known as the Men of the Veil. They begin wearing the veil at the age of 25 as a rite of passage into manhood. It covers their entire face, other than their eyes, and is almost never removed, even around family members. Aside from protecting against blowing sand and baking heat from the sun, in ancient times it was also believed to ward off evil spirits. We hope you enjoyed this trip through the Sahara and now have an appreciation for the challenges of life in this harsh and unforgiving yet beautiful part of the world. We hope you will join us again soon. Bye for now.